is on his, oh, he's got autism, he's on the aut autistic spectrum. And he varies very much with regards to his uh, behavioral patterns because he has ADHD. Recently, he attempted suicide twice and has ongoing suicidal tendencies. Mind you, uh, when, he, when, he's, when he's balanced, he's a fabulous boy, as is the case with, with people in general. And he's the loveliest boy in the world, and he feels awful, and he... He cries and he gets very upset after his events, and some of them can be very violent. Uh, and he's a big lad now because he's 17. Uh, but for all of those episodes, it's very hard for him, and it's all very hard for his mom and his dad and all of the family and the three other kids in the house to deal with. It's led to problems in school, so he can't get a proper education because the schools won't take him because he's just, you know, when things are bad for him or he has a moment or he has an episode... Um, it, it can't be dealt with by the school and it's dangerous for pupils and for, for teachers and what have you. And I imagine he is like many other uh, young children. He was on um, uh, medication for some time. I believe Lillian was telling me that a couple of years ago he was taken off his, uh, his medication. But there was nothing done to replace that and no, no sort of therapy or no sort of behavioral help or anything like that. So it's all very well. Even if the drugs do work and you take somebody off them, which sometimes can be a good thing, you have to replace it with some other form of therapy or some other form of help. He's been left swinging in the wind, like just hanging in the wind like many other people. Uh, the point as well was made yesterday by Lillian that she was, like many other people, she just had her home care grant, which was about 240 euro a week. And, you know, her lad is full time. It's, it's a full time job. And she just had it withdrawn completely without any question, without any reasons, just gone. I promised I'd talk with uh, the bioenergist and the bioenergy consultant, uh, Michael O'Doherty, and see. Um, I, know, I know that he can help her, and I know that he can help that lad. And uh, I gave him a call, asked him to take a call for me this morning, and he has done. Michael, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Did you, get, did you get an idea there of where I'm coming from with that lad? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we, I suppose we have discussed this on the air on many occasions, and you're right. I mean, certainly when you look at the uh, steps that have been taken by the government in the recent budget, I think that uh, genuinely, I think that they've lost plus, and, and, and particularly in the cases of providing that respite care, the, providing the, the, the services for these kids, because, um, you know, certainly there are a lot of families out there, we see them every day, and there are no services being provided for these children, no matter, I mean, this is not, unfortunately where the service is being provided in some ways within the academic environment in the sense of schools and assistance, and, and that's great. But in a home situation where you have kids like this that don't fit into school and that have some degree of ADD, ADHD or within their autistic spectrum or whatever, that, you know, there, there are no services. So it's only a matter of time before these kids end up in a disruptive way. And um, What can happen to them as they say without any treatment or help? That lad, not, not necessarily this lad, but yes. people then get into their early 20s. What, what can happen to them? Can they go completely off the rails? Well, well, they do. It's not a question that will they. They do. Because, you see, if the, if the problem is not dealt with properly, and it, it, it needs a multidisciplined approach from complementary medicine to nutrition to medical health, you know, so, and, and that's what's not there. There's an integrated, um, multidisciplined approach towards these types of situations because they're not understood. See, these types of children are, are, are categorized and they're classed as having some psychological disorder. And yes, the ritual and concerts of these types of medications are prescribed and sometimes are taken off. But that only sort of numbs the kind of feeling. A lot of the frustration and the anger on these children is coming about from childhood traumatic experiences. We talked about it in the past. And, and, I, and, and I know that as this progresses, as a child enters early adulthood and, and, and uh, adolescence, uh, if that's not dealt with that, yes, there's going to be conflict. They're going to have the conflict personality. They're going to be getting into trouble, you know, if it's not at school. It's, out in the streets, they're going to end up finding that maybe taking drugs or something like that. And then it's a vicious cycle from there. And I, I'm dealing with parents who find themselves in that situation, and it's very, very difficult because uh, they can't afford the type of treatment and, uh, and, 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 and that they need. And uh, they find themselves just uh, not doing anything, and these kids are just getting into trouble, nothing is happening. And, you know, it's terrible. So I can clearly identify with, uh, I think it was Lillian. Uh, Lillian, but Mark, would, would Ritalin yeah. not work for life? Well, you see, one of the difficulties about Ritalin is that they say it's a gateway drug. I mean, I, I remember being in the States talking to some teachers about this. And one of the differences about this type of medication, even the drug companies themselves that make those types of drugs will tell you that they can't determine what the long-term effects are because they're only, they're only there for the last few years. Uh, while they, to a certain degree, keep the child calm, but that, that's no good. I mean, it's like... Just, you know, it, it, it's only dealing with the symptom itself, ultimately dealing with the, the, the underlying cause of the problem that, 
that emotional, that social issue, that social anxiety issue, that emotional traumatic issue, whatever was going on before uh, they ended up in this situation. They mask, situation. They mask the issue, really. They, they pull, mask, they pull they a cloak the over it. Yeah, yeah. They, they mask the symptom, Neil. And, and like, it's sad, you know, because I think our government has really, not just this government, but I think governments in general, but I think even the health service, they really missed the boat on this. They failed, first of all, to understand what the problem is. Rather than just, you know, categorizing these children, there needs to be an in-depth research and analysis and study done around these children that clearly identifies where the problem is coming from, why it has quadrupled, I mean, over the last number of years. I mean, the amount of kids who suffer from these types of problems, you know, what, where is it coming from? Well, why, well, well why, has it, why has it quadrupled? Or is it a case that we're just much better now at diagnosing things than we were, say, 30 or 40 years ago? No, unfortunately, the statistics are very clear. I remember probably maybe uh, 10 years ago, less, uh, and people talking about one in every 100 child, their children has this type of problem. Now we're looking at one in 86. So this rules out the whole area of genetics because it's not genetics. With regard to the whole area, I think genuinely, I think it's down to the way our society has been uh, developed. I think it's down to our food. We talked about it before, the, 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 the stress that births, you know, um, the, the, the family upbringing. There's a lots and lots of different things. Uh, but certainly uh, any kind of degree of stress or trauma. And, and I was working with a guy in, 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 in the UK here, he was on the, he's, he's an actor on TV and, um, in, in the UK, and they wanted, uh, he had a huge uh, um, anger issue that they thought. <clears throat> and um, it, uh, I, did, I did some work, work with him live on TV in the UK. And, um, you know, it worked out that as a child, he was ADD. He was taking, and, and found himself, when he entered his uh, early adulthood and started, trying to hold down a job and relationship he wasn't able to. And uh, it was causing huge conflict. And, you know, we, I've been working with him and he's seen the change and he's talked about this publicly as well. <clears throat> and this is a big, big problem that if you don't identify what the cause of the problem is need, you can't deal with it. So it's not just mas masking the symptoms. And what Lillian, for her child, no matter what happens, no matter what type of drug, she, she doesn't want to see her child on drugs for the rest of his life. What she wants to do is identify what the cause of the problem is Take that multi disciplined approach towards confronting it, and you'd be amazed within a year how she can have a different. But how are you going to identify what the problem was? I mean, you can hardly ask. How are you going to identify the cause of the problem? You know, I often find that we, we, we start to get to the cause of the problem. I think when you sit down and you do a complete analysis on the child's life, on the birth, on the upbringing, on whatever the case may be, there has to be something there. I didn't ask her actually whether there yes. was a stressful or traumatic birth, so I, I don't know that. What I do know is that he gets very bad anger man anger bouts. But you see, the anger we, we 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 mistake anger with frustration, and what what's happening with Mark is that he's totally frustrated with where he is in his mindset and how he's living his life. <coughs> Excuse me, he's totally frustrated, and that frustrated creates agitation, and that agitation creates. A behavioral uh, pattern, and to us, in all intents and purposes, it's an anger pattern. Why does he go missing, Michael? Why does he go missing? He just says, "I have to get out. I have to get out." He goes wandering. They have to guards get involved and all trying to find him and everything. Yeah, well, you know what? It depends on what he does when he goes missing. But a lot of these kids go missing because they need space in their head. They're confined. They're imprisoned in in a mindset. They're locked somewhere away that's not real to them. And what happens is that they go out and they get space and they go away because they identify. This time has been a time when they can transform or deal with that threat. Now, if Very in sad. some way, that, if, if in some way, Neil, that, you know, that I could teach Lily now to work with um, Mark, then I wouldn't do some work. But I think, you know, certainly I would, would be more than happy to help. Thank you for that. Thank you. And, 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 yeah. and it isn't even about the money issue. No, I know and that. Like, I know that. But I would like to come back and maybe just to, to, to keep an eye on his progress in the coming hmm. months, if that were possible. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 but it's terrible. I mean, we're talking about one. But I'm telling you, around the country, Neil, it, it, it's horrendous. It's horrendous, the problem. It's a horrendous, the problem that people are having. And I would say, look, we've got to forget about the academic and the side of these children because you're trying to fit you know a, a square peg into a round hole not possible all right well but, i can I'll come back to that. I, there's just another few points that I wanted to, to ask to, to, to touch base in because I know I spoke about, in his case, Ritalin, but you, you're aware of 
and I'm sure you must be aware of people who have taken their own lives and those close to them figure that they really are just were so so okay in their head and their personality was fine and all of a sudden they were put on mood altering medication and they were put on different types of um, psychotic drugs or antidepressants and it completely changed them and indeed some family members would th would claim in some circumstances that I that I'm aware of uh, that that um, it was the drug that they were on that caused their suicide in America I was just making reference to a suicide malpractice that involves drugs now, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, there, there are lots of these things going on at the moment. Absolutely no doubt. I think any... Uh, there was a fantastic book that was written by Ben Goldick, who was the top medical profession, top medical doctor in, 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 in the UK. <clears throat> he, his book is called Bad Pharma. Now, the difficulty here is that <clears throat> the problem doesn't lie with the medical doctor. The medical doctors if you, are being given information by the multinational mail, and then um, it's not the truth. The whole Truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the medical doctors are doing the best what they can. They're prescribing medication. They're referring out to psychiatrists or whatever case may be for people are finding themselves in that stress state. And we're, we're not getting the full truth about the side effects of these antipsychotic medications. You know, and it, it, it's time that, that, you know, that our government, you know, create, get, get responsible and start providing our public with the, input, the proper information regarding these medications. But they but have put warnings, Michael, on, on boxes. I mean, they have done, if you were to read yeah. the warnings on, on many of the boxes, you'd never yeah. take them, actually. You know? Well, you see, this is, this, this is what I found I out. You know, when, when you look at the research around this, I mean, see, people don't do that, and often the, the very writing is but so the, But they don't so take small. it, it's so small, but they don't take it seriously. I mean, there was a case in the States involving Siroxid, wasn't there? I mean, that's a very so, well-known drug. I think it's called Paxil in America. Yeah, Siroxid, uh, Prozac, all of these medications. I mean, all of these, all of these medications have side effects and some of the side effects can lead to have suicidal tendencies and all of that but it goes back to our original point you know we have we see a massive increase in prescription of uh, these types of drugs and massive increase in admissions to hospitals because we're still failing to provide the type of therapies that are required to help people cope with or deal with their stress and when you're only masking symptoms if people can't deal with their stress they find themselves in a state where well, unfortunately suicide is an option for them and it's terrible the amount of people who will find themselves in that situation you mentioned about the economic situation but absolutely the drug system that we have in place while to a certain degree it may benefit short there are huge uh, you know uh, sort of um, implications for long-term use of that medication that people could have suicidal tendencies as a result of it. And we are seeing more and more, uh, you know, class action laws. Would you uh, see them in this part of the world? The one I was referring to was New York. A jury awarded one and a half million for medical malpractice verdict yeah. to a family of a man who committed suicide. Uh, yeah, it, it, look, it's a little bit like the smoking. It is only a matter of time before, uh, you know, because what sets precedent like? I mean, you have, when you have landmark cases, whether it's in America or in Europe, and we saw that recently, we spoke about the whole mobile phone industry, where we saw that, uh, you know, a, 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 a landmark um, judgment was made with regard to a guy who was six years of age, that the, the court ruled that he got his brain tumor from mobile phones. That was an Italian businessman, wasn't it? That, what, that was an Italian What happened to man. him? Well, I mean, he, 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 he was using a mobile phone for anything for six hours every day, uh, and uh, he got a brain tumor. Um, long story short, I mean, he, he took the case to court, and uh, then the, case, the court ruled that, yes, uh, exposure to this low, uh, or this microwave radiation is what caused his problem. And, um, I mean, we know in our own country a, a, a study was done, and uh, our own government, not the present government, is there now, but in the past, uh, an Oroctus committee was set up to investigate this, and they but, found that people are electrosensitive and it can cause these problems. But, but, but that would never be accepted as a medical fact, because I remember reading some documentation on that, which said that if that was to be deemed to be right and accurate, that mobile phones give you brain tumours, it would open up a motorway of legal actions by victims against O2, 3, Vodafone, Orange, all of them all over the world. But Neil... That's what's happening. I mean, this is a European. This is, this is a court in Europe. This is a this is a this is a this is a, this is a, 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 this is a landmark ruling. It's like what we, you know with, with what you're talking about with the drugs that uh, that that are causing people maybe to have suicidal tendencies. You know, it's only a matter of time. You know, before this happens. We but do, but do you believe? A lot do, do you believe that a mobile phone is a carcinogen? I believe that the research points quite clear that exposure to non-ionizing low micro, uh, low, non radiation is harmful to the brain. And lots and lots of studies, there was, I mean, if you look at the reflex study that was carried out, you know, four, I think it was 14 different institutes, seven countries over four years, they concluded, absolutely, it does cause problems. And I think that research needs to be looked at. And I think it needs to happen is what our own joint 
the Rockford Committee agreed was that the precautionary principle needs to be taken, uh, certainly from the point of view of the mobile phones, I would say children. I mean, I, I, and I, maybe people will identify with this. I see women sometimes sticking the mobile phone down the breast, down the bra area when they're walking along the road. I see women giving, uh, their parents giving a child a mobile phone in, in a push chair, pray, uh, you know, while they're uh, playing with it. And I mean, this is, to me is legal. I Sleeping with them on, teenagers sleep with them under their pillow sometimes. Yes, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt about it. This is, this is, this is a meeting mediation. People need to realize that. And what I would say is turn them off in the room at night time, wear an earpiece. We need technology. It has a huge role to play. It's a matter of just being precautious. Okay? And the same applies going back to our original uh, statement with regards to the drug. We just need to be precautious when it comes to the use of these medications. They have a role to play. But a long-term use of the meal is absolutely causing problems for our society. Lots of questions here. I won't have time to go through them all now. But people wondering about newborn babies. We were referring to that earlier on. Or babies who are really hard work for months after they're born, not sleeping, very colicky, crying a lot, uh, with no particular visible ailments or health issues. Uh, very, wor you know, young parents, new parents can be very worried. I wonder do they over worry sometimes? Well, no. I mean, you see, like when the mother has a, has a, I mean, we see a lot of mothers come into us with babies uh, that have colic type symptoms. A lot of kids that. Uh, are, we talked about it again in the past C section under stress of birth, back in birth, or whatever. Uh, you know, when a mother, when a child comes down the birth canal, it takes in mucus, it takes in that, that, that flora. If it doesn't, then it creates an inflamed gut. That's what's going You're not to in favour the, then of a cesarean? Emergency you're you're not in favour of the, of the too posh to push syndrome? Yeah, well, that syndrome I'm not, where it's necessary, absolutely. But the thing is, you see, Neil, what I would say to people who find themselves in that situation, often it's a question of sometimes changing the food and uh, you're getting good bacteria into the gut. And if you get rid of the mucus forming food uh, from children, if you, um, you know, put the, put the kids on a formula that's agreeable to them, if you get right bacteria in, suddenly the, the gut starts to heal itself. And what happens is that colic will go and any respiratory uh, symptoms that may arise from that, maybe upper respiratory mucus problems or nasally type of problems that possibly sometimes requires antibiotics as well. Uh, well, for, to prevent that, often it's a matter of just changing the food and things start to happen for them, you know. Well, would, you do, would you work on the diet as well as a little bit of bioenergy working on the body Absolutely. and getting the energy you have flowing? To, you, have to, you have to work on everything, Neil. Right. You work, we, what we do is when we work with the energy system, we look at the nutritional side of things, we look at the whole emotional side and mental side of things, and, 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 and the problems that are presenting in our clinics are much more complex uh, today. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we need to refer on or whatever, and I work with a number of people, some of the medical... Yeah, you, know, yeah, you can't do, you don't have the solution no, to everything. Absolutely. Well, come to me, could you, could you help Kate Middleton then with the old hyperemesis? Okay. Well, funny enough, where I'm working here in, the, in, 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 in the, uh, my clinic here in London, I'm here today, and it's just literally 100 yards on the same street it's where Kate Middleton was in the hospital yeah. where that unfortunate lady was... Uh, yeah. took her life as you say but uh, yeah well you know we see a lot of people coming into the clinic our clinics with morning sickness and um, it certainly has helped them a lot it helps to release the pressure and, and that really really helps them a lot Neil. okay well I'm going to let you have a chat with Lillian as soon as you can and Mark yeah, and I'd, be sure. very, I'd be very optimistic actually I'd be expecting good things for him and uh, I think yeah, look, if, 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 you, if, if you can get their details get it on to me and we'll, we'll call her and I'll have a chat with her and, and see what can be done and, and we'll take it from there and uh, on a more um on a more relaxed note there, I was listening to you on, 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 on the net and uh, I was looking up there. I just see there in, in the UK, actually, there's a, there's a blue Capri, a sky blue Capri with a black pot for sale, about 1,800 pounds. Will you, bring him, will you bring him back on the ferry for me, Michael? And speaking of somewhat light-hearted things, how is Kirk from uh, The Only Way is Essex and his poor old broken heart? Uh, there's no fear of him. Actually, he was the guy I was talking about who had the ADHD. Oh, same guy. Yeah, yeah. That was the same guy, you know, that angry shit. But he, he's doing well. He's doing well. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so it, it, uh, you know yourself, the only way is Essex. Right, 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 right. The only way is Essex and the only way is up. All right. The only, the only way is Cork now, you know. And, and Neil, can I just take the opportunity to, if you don't mind, to thank, uh, the, you know, yourself there for all of the support you've been to us and to the Cork people who've been coming to our clinic. We really, really appreciate it. We hope we talk some people to have better lives uh, down there and uh, we, we, uh, I want to wish them you uh, have, very, very you have helped, a, you have, and you too, many happy returns. You helped an awful lot of uh, Cork people, in fairness to you, and gave your own time and your own energy uh, free of charge on many occasions. I do appreciate that. Uh, happy Christmas, Michael. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you taking my call. Talk to you, soon. you can get further details on Michael and everything we've discussed there and lots more at www.justimagine.ie. Shine bright like a diamond.